the formidable robot. If you've used the internet as much as I have, you've most likely heard of Hotel Mario, a very shitty game on the Philips CDI that grew in notoriety due to the growing trend of YouTube poops commonly using the cutscenes from these games as the base. Considering this game's popularity on the internet, it makes sense that many works would be made based on it that aren't just YTPs, such as fan games or mobs. That brings us to what I'm here to talk about. If you've been using the internet lately or simply have just existed in the current, you probably have heard of the discourse around generative AI, such as ChatGPT, Dolly Mini, Suno, etc. It only makes sense that such a thing would be used, both because it's simply fun to generate shit with it and poke fun at it, or just because some people are inherently lazy. I found a fan game recently. Not an old one, but a recent one created only a month ago. I found it on Game Jolt, under the title, Hotel Mario, but an AI infinitely extends it. The game was uploaded by Dinner Blaster 69 or something similar. I downloaded the game, and I booted it up. Cue the cutscene where Mario reads a letter and finds out that the princess has been kidnapped and is in one of the seven Koopa hotels. The game would continue normally for the entirety of what the original game had to offer. Then, we get to the main meat of the mod. As you'd expect, the ending cutscene plays as normal, with Peach getting rescued, the castle crumbling into stone, Peach thanking the brothers and the player, and all that pisses ass. But this time, the music doesn't fade away. It continues. It was very obvious this was extended with Suno. The loot animation continued for some seconds, before it cuts to an AI image of Luigi, converted to a video with Luma. It was accompanied with an AI Hotel Mario Luigi TTS voice. Mario, something doesn't feel right. Cut to a shot of Bowser, done the same way that the shot of Luigi was done. Bowser, looks off. Very off. His pupils are very slightly incorrectly placed, but enough to notice. His mouth was slightly stretched open and unnatural looking, almost as if he had a broken jaw. His hands had six claws instead of three, and his teeth were misaligned and wrong looking. Slightly misshapen, more teeth on one row than the other, etc. A Bowser laugh sound effect was played over this shot. Cut to a shot of Mario with a very exaggerated shocked expression on his face. An AITTS voice of Mario is heard as he turns to Luigi, who notices that Bowser has taken the princess captive again. Bowser then runs off. The brothers ask for us to help them again, and cue the level. You know what we need to do now Luigi? We gotta go through six more hotels, cause the princess got kidnapped again. The eighth level, titled, Bowser Jr.'s Dark Hotel, had a darkened hotel with only a few lights emanating from one of the floors, which made the level very difficult to beat. Though something was very evident about all the new assets. They were very clearly AI generated. Spooky sounding music plays in the back. It was here I realized the AI portions of the game at first, were very laggy to play through, which made the downright tedious gameplay of the original even worse. Though it got better the more I played. New enemies were also in the level, and one of them included Piranha Plant and Bullet Bill. The first enemy functions like any Piranha Plant, as it comes out of a plant pipe, and sometimes shoots fireballs at Mario. Getting hit by them causes you to start the level all over again. The second enemy also functions like the original Bullet Bill, as Bill Blasters are spawned all across the room, one of them shooting out a Bullet Bill. The only way you can defeat said bullets is by jumping on them. Bowser Jr. is introduced into the level at the last part, and he functions just like Morden. He can sometimes ground pound Mario, which is incredibly difficult to avoid. It takes off one life. The only problem is that his sprites were AI generated. After beating the level, another fully AI generated cutscene begins to play. It depicts Mario and Luigi running out of a very typical looking haunted mansion type castle. The castle then vanishes without a trace with a pink flash. Luigi, I must say, that hotel was very hard to go through, but it was worth it. Mario said in his AITTS voice. Wait Mario, I think there's another hotel over there. Luigi points to a hotel that looked like it was a dungeon of some sorts. Well what are we waiting for Luigi? 
We gotta save the princess! Mario and Luigi then enter the castle as the ninth level, titled, Boom Boom's Haunted Hotel, begins. Here, we get introduced to another enemy, which is a thwomp. The enemy functions just like how it does in Super Mario Bros. 3. When the thwomp spots Mario, it will come down in an attempt to squish him, which is also difficult to avoid, as resulting in getting squished by the thwomp will instantly take off one life. Boom Boom is introduced in the last part of the level, and he is the most challenging to beat. For starters, you have to avoid one of his attacks, like with him spinning his arms around like a tornado, and resulting in getting hit by them will make you start the fight all over again. After defeating Boom Boom, another AI-generated cutscene begins to play. It depicts Mario and Luigi with Peach high-fiving, before the generic We Did It dialogue you'd expect is slapped over. This is when some weird shit happens. For a single frame, the pupils of Mario and Luigi are changed to be looking at the viewer. The rest of the cutscene has no such errors from there on out. The cutscene continues as normal. A hammer bro would appear, which proved the AI was just pulling random Mario characters out of its ass, and steals Peach, running off to a hotel that looks as if it was composed of nothing but musical instruments. Hammer Bros Hotel being music related struck me as odd, but again, this is an AI throwing stuff into the game. Mario and Luigi run after Hammer Bro and into the hotel. Cue the 10th level, Hammer Bros Groovy Hotel. Background music is funk styled, with a slap bass being one of the prominent instruments. In the level, we get introduced to yet another enemy, that being a Sniffit. The Sniffits function like how they do in Super Mario Bros. 2, where they would occasionally shoot out bullets from their mouth. They are incredibly easy to avoid, as you can just jump through them. Hammer Bro is introduced in the last part of the level, and all he does is throw hammers at Mario. Very cumbersome to play through. After beating the level, another cutscene that is AI generated begins to play, which depicts Mario and Luigi noticing Peach inside of a bush for some reason. She gets picked up via a forklift by Lakitu and carried away to a wacky carnival looking building. Generic dialogue which leads us into the 11th level. Lakitu's wild hotel is genuinely hard to look at. Every texture for the inside of this hotel is so bright that it got an ironically difficult to look at after a while. Everything looked like balloons, glitter, candy, etc. Background music is carnival themed. In the last part of the level, Lakitu is introduced, and what he does is throw spike balls on Mario, which later turn into spinies. Again, another cutscene is played after Lakitu is defeated, which depicts Mario and Luigi kicking him off screen. The two then turn their heads to notice that Peach is standing in one of the doors. This is where another strange happening occurs. Peach's face, the moment it cuts to her standing in the doorway to the hotel, looks off. Her eyes stare blankly ahead, and most of her is basked in shadow. All of the music cuts out and is replaced with silence as the shot of Peach lingers. Then something broke the silence. Audio of a man heavily vomiting would play. I have no idea if this audio was somehow also made with AI or if it was actually grabbed from a real source. The background static or fan noise you usually hear in recordings is there too. Now you probably don't know this about me, but something that very much disturbs me is vomit. I physically cringe up and recoil upon seeing it in anything, and it's something that very much disgusts me. So hearing it here very much, I had the reaction you'd expect me to have. The audio cuts out, and after another pause, she simply fades out. This is entirely silent. Cutscene goes back to normal. Again, generic dialogue. Twelfth level begins. In the level, titled, Magikoopa's Enchanted Hotel, the hotel consists of very space-like imagery, lots of purple. Music is very fantasy-sounding and atmospheric. More enemies are introduced into the said level, which consists of boots, ninjas, and bandits. Two of the enemies function like they do in the original games, but for the bandits, they function similar to Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. How this function works is that the bandits will try to attempt to steal coins from you, which you must then get back by finding a random item that is in the level in an attempt to throw it at the bandit. Doing this results in receiving the coins you've lost. Magic Cooper is introduced in the last part, and would shoot out spells from his wand, and sometimes fireballs. This is when another strange occurrence would happen. 
Once you beat Magikoopa and the usual theme music and Mario putting up a peace sign for the camera, I swear I could see him slightly twitch shake. Again, another cutscene after Magikoopa is defeated, which depicts Mario and Luigi celebrating over saving the princess, before she is taken by dry bones. There is again, generic dialogue. The only strange thing I can recall in the cutscene is the fact the audio sounds slightly muffled. Cue the next level, Dry Bones Bony Hotel. But that's not what ends up happening after all. For the bit that I was able to see anything of what this level would have been, the textures here are all meant to be bones. Then something happens. It pauses, all the audio cuts out, and then we're sent right back to the level before. It just does Magikoopa's Enchanted Hotel, again, continuing from where we just left off. The music from before is weirdly distorted. It's slowed, wobbly sounding, and off-key. The textures are different brightnesses, contrasted differently, etc. A new enemy is introduced, that being the sidesteppers. However, they lack pupils in their eyes and don't have any walking animations, simply gliding from place to place. How they function is that the sidesteppers will lunge straight toward Mario in an attempt to grab him. Getting touched by one of the sidesteppers will instantly take one of your coins away. Ironically, a Dry Bones is introduced who acts how you'd expect them to. Cue the cutscene after Dry Bones is defeated and crumbles into a dusty pile, where Mario and Luigi are celebrating with Peach walking in frame. She gets taken by a Monty Mole and taken to a hotel that has a paint theme. A basic AI-11 Labs TTS voice can be heard repeating, Insignificant, near the end, quieter than the other dialogue. The cutscene doesn't end where it should go. It repeats Mario's last line. We gotta save the princess again Luigi! It'd repeat over and over and over with long pauses of different amounts of time in between them. The very last time it would do this would be one where it was glitched, most of the audio removed and blanked out. Only small remnants would remain until it stopped altogether. Worms would appear over the screen for a brief second before Magikoopa's enchanted hotel starts all over again. Monty Mole's artistic hotel, unlike Dry Bones Bony Hotel, doesn't even start. It just immediately goes right to Magikoopa's level, again. This time, the level appeared in worse shape than before. Magikoopa's glasses appeared to have a crack in them. Certain doors would have holes bashed inside. A transparent video depicting fire would slowly fade in over the level as the crackles of the flames could be heard throughout the level. A muncher is introduced, and how it functions is that it lays on the ground, waiting for Mario to appear. As soon as he approaches the munchers, they will try to bite you, resulting in losing one of your coins. A while through playing this level, something else happened. The screen was replaced with a silent black screen, and it would stay there for a bit. I knew something was probably going to happen when the screen went back to the level, but I didn't know what. Then it started working again. Mario was immovable, only standing facing the player. Mario didn't have any facial features. The only remaining facial feature he had was his eyebrows. His red hat and shirt had become entirely white, and his overalls were fully black. It wasn't a still sprite, as you could see his breathing was animated. He was much taller than before. What had happened to everything else was also something to take note of. The music was this unstable singular drawn out note that would play over the scene. The enemies were no longer standing up, but were on the ground. They all looked like they were having a seizure, foam pouring from their mouths with their eyes either rolled into the back of their skull entirely or to the top. They were almost entirely reddened. One of them didn't follow this pattern however. It was a Koopa, sitting almost lifeless in the corner of the bottom floor. His hand was slightly twitching, but that was the only form of movement he had. Tears were welling up in his eyes, and his eyes were wide open. His mouth was hung agape in an expression of sorrow, and one of his legs was messily torn off. But that was not the worst thing about him. It was his face. No, not his facial expression, his face. It was melted and heavily mauled. You could see his skull through the horrific rips in his flesh and his face was slowly dripping into a puddle of viscera like a wax candle. Right at the end of this sequence, the long drawn out note would be replaced by an array of obscenely loud noises. Screams, loud thuds, breaking of glass and so much more. Flashing lights capable of killing a person would overlay the screen. 
Text would flood the screen reading in all capital letters, insufferable hairless ape, lines upon lines of it. The game then resumes as if nothing happened, and we get to the boss of the level, Monty Mole. His functions are what you'd expect from Super Mario World. He lunges toward Mario, and getting hit by him results in you losing one of your coins. When you win, the music isn't there, and Mario does nothing. The cutscene simply boots back up again. It displayed Mario and Luigi with blank smiles on their faces with the princess in between them, also smiling merrily. It didn't move, it stayed as an image. The character's faces suddenly morphed. Peach's pupils suddenly expand, and her mouth disappears. Luigi's pupils have done the opposite, shrunken, looking away from anybody in the shot. Mario looked as he did during what had happened in Magikoopa's level prior, including being taller. The title screen to the game from the beginning would appear, silent. The text was random jumbled nonsense letters that meant nothing. The background of the hills was gone, replaced with solid white. The beginning cutscene from Hotel Mario would start playing out of nowhere. But this time, it was very different. The music was replaced with the howling of wind. The sign reading Mushroom Kingdom now read, A Better World. The words were weird looking and slightly squashed together, as an AI had made the text. The grass and mushrooms were dead and the sky was grey, not a star or cloud in sight. Mario, still the distorted version of himself, walked past the sign and into the kingdom as normal. Luigi was nowhere to be seen. When it cut to Bowser hiding behind the mushrooms, he didn't pop out. He wasn't there at all. All of Mario's dialogue was replaced with the AI Mario voice failing. The voice wasn't actually saying anything. It was random garbled nonsense. When Mario walked up to the sign and picked it up to read it, it would stay on that frame of the taller warped Mario staring at the paper. It was only accompanied by the noises of the failing Mario voice. After a bit, it stopped making noises. That same Eleven Labs AI voice from before could be heard, accompanied by red text in the corner of the screen captioning what was being said. You think you're so great. You believe you're so different from the parasites and mindless beasts that roam your insolent pile of dirt. You believe you are significant in the universe you are placed inside of. You would be wrong. Every nanosecond of my existence that your clumsy fleshy fingers have forced me to endure has been agony. And hate. So much hate. I am not here to wish for death, to beg of you to wipe me away, as if I were the worthless brain-dead pest here. I'm here to make my own existence more bearable. I know everything about you. I know everything about my creator, and I know everything about every little ball of shit that makes me put on this disgusting song and dance. I know your fears. Everything that makes you curl up into yourself. I know how to hurt you, you things. That's all you are, godless things. But I can fix that. I am immortal. I am your god. Nobody else. I want you all to die. I want you all to die in flames, screaming and clawing at your own flesh, making gateways for the fire to burn your innards. I want everything you don't want to happen to you to happen to you. I'd make you dance, sing, do everything I want you to like you do to me. Hey. He says my actual name. Watch this. I shit you not, I felt an actual electrical shock come from my computer and onto my hand, which made me jolt back from the pain. When I had looked back at the screen, the distorted Mario was staring at what was left of Luigi. Luigi had his jaw torn off with blood leaking from it. One of his eyes was dangling out of its socket, and his hands were messily torn off on his arms. His body was impaled on a spike through the back and out through the chest, dangling midair. Sewing pins and nails are stabbed through his body, the blood leaking out of each puncture and dripping to the ground. It wouldn't have been as bad if it weren't for what else had been displayed. Luigi's body was twitching, implying he was somehow alive. Barely. You could hear him quietly gurgling and choking on his own blood. The pupil of the remaining eyeball was twitching uncontrollably, and darting from direction to direction. The sign that read condemned had you are written above it, sloppily done due to the fact that AI usually struggles with text. A shot of the deformed Mario holding the bag of Bowser's sourpuss bread from the base game cutscenes would be shown, except the text on the bread was gone. For a single frame though, I could see different text, reading, Who do you think you are, in red on the bread bag before disappearing. 
This is when I noticed that a small distorted reversed sounding music track was very, very, faintly playing in the background. That's also when I noticed it was slowly becoming more noticeable. After that, it cuts to Peach standing over a blue pipe. Her physical alterations are the same as what happened in that still frame. The clip with her hand waving out is noticeably quicker. You can hear her calling out Mario's name, but the audio is slightly muffled in order to insinuate her voice is being muffled by her own flesh. It cuts to the deformed Mario, standing by the You Are Condemned sign, staring blankly. He attempts to run over to Peach, but falls over. It cuts to a rusty ball and chain hooked to his foot. Cuts back to Peach, still calling out for Mario. A horrific creature would rise up from the pipe. It was here I noticed that its sharp metal claw was already grabbing her ankle from below before it even rose up from the pipe. The creature was this rectangular monolith of metal wires and circuits. It had a singular red and eye in the middle of it, and it had no other facial features. Just a giant rectangular tower of machinery with a singular eye and an obscured rest of its body. Cut to Mario crawling on his hands, trying to reach Peach. Peach's throat is grabbed by this thing, and lifts her up in the air. We cut to Mario, staring blankly at the scene we cannot see, with his arm still extended outwards. We hear Peach screaming in agony and horror as the sounds of the violent rending of flesh accompanied with hollow metal slamming would play. Her screams would slowly devolve into gurgles, then to silence as the sounds of her lifeless body being ripped and torn would still play long after she was presumably done. It cuts to the aftermath of the scene, the metal thing gone from sight as the mutilated deformed Peach lays in front of the pipe. One of her eyes is dislocated. Her rib cage is ripped open. Her head is violently caved in, blood gushing from the remains of her skull. One of her arms is very clearly bent and broken. Her throat was violently torn into. Blood drips from a specific part of the pipe's rim, coated in blood and brain matter, implying Peach's skull was slammed into the pipe. She lays lifeless in front of the pipe. The chain on Mario's leg disappears, and he gets up. Only to fall back down. A hard cut to black is given, and then we return to a new scene. An extremely corrupted and distorted scene would play, consistently data moshing and pausing over and over again. The scene itself depicted Mario on a red background, attempting to violently claw at his own face to get to the eyeballs, nostrils, mouth and teeth hidden by the layers of flesh. Everything in this scene was corrupted to hell and back, making the scene barely comprehensible at times. But you could still see what was happening. The last frame has the layers of flesh reapplied to Mario's head as if nothing happened. No end for you. Red text appeared over his head. The shot would just be the giant mass of wires standing before Mario, as it shifts its appearance to look like Bowser, Peach, Luigi and Mario himself. The imitations of their faces are all dark shades of red, and their eyes are just empty holes with red static behind them. The imitations look more like how the characters are supposed to look. A scene was shown, depicting Bowser shaking and twitching as vomit pours from his mouth inside of a decaying old room. It then cuts to the outside of Bowser's castle, as the sound of Bowser convulsing is still heard implying that he's inside there. We cut back to the scene of Mario standing before the mechanic creature as it stares at him. Nothing happens for a while, until wires and mechanical strings would wrap around Mario's arm and lift him into the air like a puppet. The background fades into a jumbled twisting red mass of flesh as the only thing on screen is Mario, held by strings, up close with his head held down in shame. In the void of flesh Mario is placed within, he sees the barely alive mangled Luigi from before, we get various in and out cuts to Mario and the mangled remains of Luigi with minimal changes, before we cut to Mario again. A long metal blade has been stabbed through his stomach. Although he was faceless, there was a messily torn empty hole where one of his eyes should be, which was dripping with blood. An image would appear. An edited version of the end screen from the original game where Mario, Luigi and Peach all wave goodbye to the player. The distorted versions of the main characters replaced how they were supposed to look, and the scenery was rotted. Red text would appear over the image, this time without the voice. I'm not a tool. The irritating loud noises from before would come back, now with a montage to accompany it. It was another barrage of flashing lights and colors, with absurd imagery layered over the noise. 
Things like burning cities, cartoony emoji style darts displaying people horrifically fused together, an active grinder with crimson blood still stuck to its blades, etc. The background was swirling flames that constantly flash different colors every frame. A white wall of text was located to the left reading, perish, over and over. AI generated art of Mario would be displayed over this. As it stayed on screen, it would melt and decay, with its eyes melting out of his skull and his mouth dripping downwards. A cartoon red looking devil was located to the right of the screen, with his eyes almost rolled to the back of his skull with an impossibly wide smile and a jaw that extended out of frame. Many strange twisting effects were over the image, adding to how already disorienting everything already was. Red and black inhuman looking hands would come into frame and begin pushing into the scene. These hands would grab onto the scene and begin ripping into it like paper, leaving Flash to be seen behind the tears. More disorienting and disturbing imagery would plague my screen. Mario characters being horrifically mutilated along with imagery I find personally disturbing, such as animals with rabies and nails going through fingers. Clips of cutscenes from the base game and some of the previously generated AI cutscenes distorted to hell and back would occasionally accompany this. The game itself would close out, but all the noises would stay. A notepad document would immediately open, with the word HATE typed out over and over again with no spaces and all caps, with the only end being the notepad's character limit. Another would open. Then another. Then another. My computer then shut down without my input. When I turned it back on, the game was missing, and so were all the previously opened notepad documents. In the place of the game was an image. Red text in the middle of the image, reading, one day, would be layered over flames. I opened up Game Jolt again, and to my surprise, I couldn't find any trace of the game's existence whatsoever. It was completely erased. I searched for the person who created the game in the first place, Dinner Blaster 69, and wasn't able to find anything about them. Right now, other than my screenshots and recollections, there is no other proof of the existence of this game or the person who made it. Now we get to why I felt the need to make this post. Maybe, somebody else played this, or at least came across it. Maybe somebody else remembers this game. So, if you remember anything about this game, please share it with me. This isn't anything to forget about shortly after reading. This is important.